Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, my day job is elder, as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, but this is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen this show before, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they're living in Hudson, they wanna stay right here. So my wonderful co-host, John Parent, has been with me now for several months and, and, and trying to find us great guests. We, we, we regularly want to find folks that you, whom you should know about and programs you should know about so that you can continue to live here in Hudson. So John, thank you very much for coming back and uh, happy new year on the uh, new season. Uh, and now usually John finds the, these wonderful guests, but this week I have some. Um, they are from a, uh, a, um, a wonderful program and place called Better Day. And I'm gonna ask them to talk to you about it. Regina, Regina uh, Wolf and Valerie Harding um, um, they had R Regina, Regina's Better Day had been Pleasantries, which got, got evolved into Better Day. It's a wonderful program for folks, including clients of mine that I have sent over to them, uh, including one of my brothers, my brother-in-law, you know, for folks who have had, who have memory problems, uh, and who just want a great environment in which to, in which to live to help them to be able to stay home. So thank you very much both to Regina and to Valerie for uh, coming on today. Um, and um, if it's okay with you, John, I'm just gonna kind of let them take it from there in terms, yeah. of, in terms of just kind of describing what the program is. And, 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 and Regina, if you could, if you could just kind of talk a little bit about how you ended up being involved in what is now Better Day. And then Valerie, I know you're, you're intimately involved there. If you could just kind of talk about that and then we can talk about your sense of the need for these programs, you know, here in um, in the Marlboro Hudson area. Very good. Thank you, thank you, Arthur and John, for having us. Uh, it's great to be on your show again. <laughs> and so my name is Regina Wolfritz, and I am the executive director at Better Day. We are an adult day program for people with dementia, with memory problems, and we are actually right on the Hudson line. We are right on a Reservoir Street in Marlboro. We are in a residential area. We are in a ranch style house. And uh, we are here Monday to Friday. We open our house for our guests. And uh, we are typically up to 15 guests per day that come in and we spend the day together. Uh, literally, as our name says, making us the best day we can possibly make it. And uh, as far as Frank and Mary go, this is the place if you really want to stay in your home, stay either living with your spouse or with your children, even if you have some trouble with your memory and need some support. So you can come and spend the day with us. Um, and um, we are a small, wonderful team of uh, five care partners and then myself. And what is special about us is we are really small. We are in a home, feels like a home, and we find things to do for each of us that we enjoy. So Arthur, to your question, how did I get here? Yes. So, well, I have a long winding way how I got here. <laughs> My background is actually in horticulture. You don't sound like you come from Hudson though. I have to say, <laughs> oh, it, it, maybe, maybe from a, a section of Hudson I hadn't spent a lot of time <laughs> in. <laughs> All right, yes, I'm from Germany. So I came to the States when I was 25 with my husband, who's a scientist. So brought us to this wonderful area in New England with all the hot science going on here. And so I came here and I did bring a, a degree in horticulture from Germany, from University of Hanover. Came here, we raised our children. And then I did work for 15 years at a community farm in Natick. And uh, they are really with a goal to connect children to where their food comes from, to nature created an outdoor um, preschool program, which is doing beautifully, especially in these times. And, uh, but then my family got really, um, I have lots of aunts and my parents who, who happen to live with dementia. And I realized I really have fun being with them. So then I thought like, well, shouldn't I be doing something with that? And at the farm, I had realized I love working with families really love working with families and I realized 
whether it's young families or families that are growing older, you need a community. You really need a community to carry through all these different phases in your life. Anyhow, so then I decided, well, let me check it out whether I really like to work in elder care. I became a certified nurse assistant, worked in adult day programs. And when I realized I really have a lot of fun with it, I went back to school, went back to La Salle College, got my master's degree in elder care management. And during those studies, I was looking for an intern a place for an internship. And this is uh, when I discovered um, Tammy Pozoriki. Actually discovered her on a video on, on your cable show, Arthur. I watched a video, you interviewing Tammy, and I'm like, oh my goodness, this woman is doing exactly what I would love to do. Mm -hmm. So I contacted Tammy and I did my internship with her. I got trained with her, did my internship and quickly turned into a care partner myself worked for 10 months as a care partner, finished, then finished my degree, um, worked as a program coordinator at Rogerson House in Jamaica Plain for a year. And then I got the phone call from Josh Obeder, who was in the process of uh, buying pleasantries from Tammy. And I came on as the program director. Wow. So long story, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. To, and, and John, I had I had originally met Tammy Pozzaricki because, she, you know, I, I was I actually did the permitting for her uh, when she was trying to open pleasantries because there was a there was a whole question. This is a this is a house and it's in a residential yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. It's residentially zoned. Yeah. Is this allowed? You know, and, and and it was such a great program that the building inspector really took an interest in this and said, well, you know, Technically, these, you know, there isn't a specific category for these because this is such an unusual thing to have a social day program. There were, you know, certainly there are programs like this for little kids. You know, you expect those to be in neighborhoods and they're and they're allowed as a zoning matter by state law in, in you know, in all res, you know, in all neighborhoods, these um, daycares, right, for, for kids. And so the building inspector said, well, basically, if a daycare is allowed for kids, one should be allowed for seniors under the under the the uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act because you have to treat them the same. And so that's how it started, and it just it just prospered. And and it and what's been remarkable to me is as I do a lot of work in in this area around the state, I just haven't seen any others. You know, this notion of a small program, really residential. It's 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 so. In, and I always tell people like in Marlboro and Hudson, it's like. This little gem that happens to be in our communities that many people don't even know about, you know. Wow, wow. Yeah, may I just ask one quick? Oh, and, ask ask anything, Good. John. Good. Uh, you know, uh, this is the type of program that uh, I, I wish there was a little bit more publicity about. We had for a number of years my uh, now deceased father-in-law, who died at age 100, uh, going back a couple of years ago. And, and he was a uh, uh, almost a resident at, at our local senior center. Uh, they provided a wonderful service. Uh, and there were a couple of times where we looked around for a respite uh, for a week or so, you know, so that uh, uh, we could have Walter be somewhere else for a little while. You know, this type of program to be able to take somebody for a day, uh, it is wonderful, um, but I, I think we need to uh, we need to get this out. Do you work at all with Janice Long, um, who is the director of our senior center? In yes, Huston? yes, I do. She's oh, been actually wonderful, and she's she's been wonderfully supportive uh, for grant writing. And uh, we have some of um, my staff also work with her at uh, through the daybreak programs at the senior center. So there's a nice nice uh, cooperation between okay. us. Yes. Janice is uh, one of the, certainly one of the best department heads that we have. She is just totally dedicated, you know, to what she does. So it's a wonderful program. So I'm glad that uh, she's aware of you. That, that's good. Okay. I think, I think, John, that actually Janice may have taken kind of some of her inspiration ah. for the Daybreak program okay. from seeing this, you know, and, the, and Daybreak has worked, is, I think, has been terrific. It's been work, you know, it's all three communities now, Marlboro, Hudson, mm -hmm. And, and Northboro, and I think Jan Janice was really, a as once again, very innovative, a real leader 
Great. It's for is for kind of a pe folks who need that same kind of respite trying for for a really yeah. shorter period, right? Yeah. And and but I think a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the stuff that she's doing kind of has replicated on a smaller scale what 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 now better day is all about and what pleasantries is all about. Now, so, so can we just ask Valerie? So Valerie, you know, once again, I've got I've gotten to know you. So first of all, John, I better do you know all uh, uh, you know full full disclosure. This is a this is a nonprofit, and I'm on the board, right? At this nonprofit, I think this I think it's a really really important service. But Valerie, could we just have you talk a little bit about how you got involved in this? Sure. Um, I I was looking for a good place for my mom who was um, having some memory loss, and I wasn't in interested in putting her in a nursing home or anything like that. I wanted her to be still enjoying our family. And I couldn't find really a place that was a day program that was social. And um, I looked around at multiple places and it was very institutionalized. It was like going into a facility building uh, where you kind of would wash down the walls or, you know, it was very a sterile, a sterile feel. And um, I just thought, you know, I just don't want to put her in a program that's going yeah. to be feeling so um, just not not a lot of warmth and very um, sterilized sort of and um, and when I came across and looking for at that time was pleasantries it was night and day it was a home um, you know I went in there and everybody would sit at the same dining a large dining room table for lunch there were you know couches people there was a beautiful waterways you could see a you know this gorgeous lake from the the front room where they were doing exercises i mean it was it was like very warm and genuine and everybody was super friendly and so happy to see her and my mom was excited <laughs> <laughs> and be with people her own age that she could you know converse with and talk to and it was for me my telltale was it had to be a place that i wouldn't mind going to myself as you know, when I get older, you know, where would I want my children or my husband or you know to put me? And this was like the the perfect the perfect place. It was, um, it you know, everybody was so warm and friendly, and I felt like she was in a safe place and uh, well cared for. So um, years of doing that uh, when it was um, before uh, when Tammy turned around and sold it to Josh. Um, we were still very excited to have it be around, but um, eventually when um, I had heard, you know, there was going to be some changeover, I was so happy to have Regina because I had met Regina when it was pleasantries in the beginning. And she was a big part of the reason why I was coming because she was so welcoming and my mom and all the people there were so happy to see that familiar face. And, um, and I liked her um, philosophy of, um, you know, all of her caretakers there, they, you know, they um, rotate them and so they have breaks. So it's not always the same people. It's the same faces, the same people, but they take breaks. So they don't, so it's, it's like they come refreshed and happy. Right, Regina? So yes, it is true. It's, there's a big, there's a, there's a big piece that you just mentioned it, that nobody um, really, it's it's a hard it's a hard job and it's uh, demanding, and so yes, our care partners are very special and uh, exceptional. I think because they do come with fresh, warm energy every day. None of them is full time, and that is uh, that is by design, so by that time. we um, that we can be there full hundred percent with our guests when we're on. Yeah, that was one of the first things. I mean, I think my mom's been going there now oh, five years, right? Yeah, four years. Five year mark. And um, she's still, it's it's what has allowed her to, you know, be able to be with us at home and we can do errands and stuff and I'm working. So it's enabled me to be able to work and feel confident that she's cared for. And I feel like it's gotten her a lot better when she started going there she was having a lot more um, being able to remember things a lot better. And um, the socialization, I think, was really helpful for her. Um, it made a big difference. Plus, you guys were taking her on outings. 
you are to Tower Hill, is that right? I mean, yes, we're we going to a lot of places. Yes, <laughs> yes we do, do we go to the, the Art Museum, Tower Hill Botanic Garden. We have the scouts coming, we have high school students coming. It's such a vibrant. I just said, I just said yesterday to the staff, I said, like, oh my goodness, we've almost made it through this pandemic. Can you just imagine uh -huh. if we can do all those things again? It's, you know, it gets us very excited. <laughs> so, yeah. John, John, I had heard about the place. Um, um, you know, once again, I had dealt with Tammy, but then I had a client, so, you know, they were in their early 90s and the husband was having some memory problems. And and so I, I had suggested that they go down and 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 I, I swear to God, it extended his life by, you know, a couple of years, you know, and just the quality of his the quality of his life. And then later, my sister, I had advised my sister to do and the same thing happened with my brother in law. So so can you can you could you just describe for folks? I think a lot of times, you know, I, people may be watching. And as you say, John, you know, it's a matter of kind of getting the word out. But yeah. Can, can you just describe what a day would look like, you know, for somebody who was coming for, for who was coming for a day? Can you just kind of talk sure. that out. Sure. I can actually just describe what's happening right now. Like a typical day. Today we have a full day. We're an eight hour program from 8.30 to 4.30. So around 8.30 our guests start trickling in and we'll have a very leisurely breakfast together. So this is where, what uh, Velop describes our big table. We love that big table. And uh, so everybody comes in and depending on their likes, you know, we serve fruit, we serve English muffins or make pancakes. So we just sit and have a good breakfast. Um, we talk about news, you know, our care partners pull up some good stories, some good things that happen. And so it's just uh, it's slow warming up and getting into the day, just like all of us, we need to have a gentle getting going um then about 10 o'clock every morning we do exercise so we move into our sunroom again as well described that's overlooking the reservoir which is bright and just really perky so we go in there for half about half an hour we do exercise every morning this is like chair exercises uh, with music we have um half of our staff is trained in what's called ageless grace which is a specific um, exercise program that is actually supposed to even fire new uh, uh, neurons in your brain. So it's just, it's fun, it's healthy, and everybody can do it at their own pace and at, according to their own ability. Then after that, actually this morning, they just uh, broke off and they made some zucchini bread. So we, we love to bake, we love to bake, to cook. So this morning we, we bake together and then, um, some stuck longer for it, some got a little restless, so they moved back into the sunroom and started playing a game. So what we do then, the morning and the afternoon, we try to mix up physically and mentally challenging activities that we kind of like. So after playing, for example, beanbag toss or horseshoe, then probably we would switch to a crossword puzzle that we do together or to poetry reading or to story core. And so we really try to change it up because everybody, you know, some, some are st strong in one aspect and not so strong in the other so that everybody feels comfortable. But always is nobody has to do anything. We also have some guests. We have our lovely, one lovely guest. She just loves to wander through the house in the morning. She visits with me in the office. She helps uh, Kathy help with the cleanup after breakfast. So there's a lot of flexibility because we are so small um and then it's before we know it, it's lunchtime we do cook all our meals on premises so we have one staff that is uh, designated to cook we have lunch and again that's a very leisurely extended <laughs> period of time we sit together we always have fresh salad a warm meal um we try to mix it up very well we are very conscious about eating healthy but also we it need to taste good. So we always end on an ice cream note, which everybody loves. So we end with ice cream. And then after lunch is a time where that looks very different for each of the guests because some people like to put up their feet for a little. Other people, we always have a walking group. There's always a walking group after lunch that pick up some, picks up the mail from the mailbox down the road. And some people love to help clean up in the kitchen. So it's kind of, this is the time when everybody kind of looks for their own I, I love that you have that flexibility to, yeah. to to be able to adapt to each person. And I know my mom can't always do everything, but she 
she's part of a group and that she belongs. And for me, that, that makes all the difference in the world. And I think that just brings out her best, that she's not so um, frustrated or angry. I mean, she's just, she feels like she's has, um, she just feels like she's part of a group and she has, uh, you know, a purpose. And that to me makes all the difference in the world for when she comes home to us and is, you know, interfacing with my, you know, working and, and talking with my 11 year old or working with, you know, doing things with our, with the kids and our family. Um, I notice a big difference on weekends versus when she's with you guys during the week. Um, so, you know, you're doing great work. So John, once I was, I was talking to my sister during the, 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 uh, the years when, when, when her husband was there and she said her, one of her favorite stories was one day she picked him up and she said, she said, Ralph, she said, she said, so how did you have a great day? What did you have a great day today? He said, oh, we had a terrific day. Well, what did you do? I have no idea. <laughs> right? it, was, it was great. Right. Because, but because it just, it gets to the essence of what, what living is, you know, living is not about what you did, right? It's about kind of how you feel. And if, you know, you, do you feel respected that you feel that you were kind of like really included and stuff. And to have, as I say, to, to have a place like that, it's just, I just never seen anything quite like this before. You know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a special, it's a special, it's a special place. So now, once again, my one of my, one of my jobs here is always to be the timekeeper, and I'm watching kind of the time. John, do you have any other questions about this place or about kind of what they're doing? You're, John, you're you're muted right now. We got it. Yeah, you're you. Okay. Yeah, you're now not you're, muted, but I'm not seeing you. Well. No. Well, let, let me just talk. Uh, it sounds like a wonderful opportunity. Uh, how are you handling the COVID-19 uh, crisis that we're in? What, what we did, John, is, you know, we have drastically reduced numbers. We are a maximum of six guests at any time compared to 15. So we have all our seating is spaced out six feet. We wear masks inside. During the summer month, we spend 90% outdoors of the program time. Um, we have a cleaning protocol, you know, that goes with all the required um, requirements by the CDC. And, uh, and we have, we created two very small um, cohorts. So what I did is in order to accomplish, accommodate everybody, instead of having a full day program every day, we split into a morning and an afternoon group with six guests maximum. And I also split the staff in half. So three are in the mornings, three are in the afternoons. And these two groups never overlap. So that in case we should have an infection that it really stays within a small group and not, doesn't affect the other group. Um, so these are all measurements that we've put into place. We actually just switched to the medical masks, the NK and 95s because they are more more sufficient. Um, we are, I do think we are facing the next six, eight weeks will be the hardest probably. And, and we also are, put in that, that special um, air. Uh, oh yes. And we put in an, air, I mean, that's put in an air filtration system in August to just have to really um, exchange the air on an hourly basis. We did this. The staff has been getting tested every week. And to make to get it us through the holidays, we had for the first time all the guests were also tested after Thanksgiving and after the holidays. Now before they we all came back, we actually took off the week between Christmas and New Year's to really make sure that with so with the numbers being so high that that we come all back as clean as we can. And um, we are just and nobody's to, gotten COVID. Nobody, nobody. We've been doing this for months and months now. <laughs> It's been wonderful. And, I, and I have to thank the families too, because the families are incredibly responsible. They really, you know, they stick it, they stay at home. And the only thing they literally do is come to our place. And as care, care partners, we try our best to do the same. It's sometimes a little tricky over the holiday season. We have our adults, children come from college, but we try. And so far we've been doing well. And, uh, and everybody has also been incredibly good at like just yesterday, 
I actually closed the afternoon because we had it, like two uh, two spaces down, we had somebody who was exposed. And so, you know what, there's just no risk taking, we wait for the test results to come back and tomorrow everybody will be back in the afternoons as well. So it's a lot of communication and that has been the key thing. The communication with the families is wonderful and they appreciate and support all these sometimes not so pleasant measures that we have been taking. Sure. But I do think, well, right, I, we still, what we love it, it's still warm and cozy, right. <laughs> even with the mask, even with the, right. it's, you can, I mean, you can't hear them right now, but I can hear them laughing and, uh, and that's all that counts. The, we got to, we got used to our masks on the face. We laugh, we joke, we do, we play our games. <laughs> it's, it's a very, it's a very special place. So, so I, I really want to, I really want to thank Regina. Well, I want to thank you, Regina, for, for, you know, for, doing this right i think it's a really important thing and valerie for coming on just to give folks a sense from sure. you know kind of a reality sense of, of of what this can really do for someone right and john thanks very much for you know for allowing me to have these these guests on i, I i'm hoping you know regina and and and, and or it's, it's, uh, that you can get your the contact information to the folks here at uh, head hudson cable in case anybody wants to talk to you I would, folks, if you have, if you are having memory issues or are working with somebody with memory issues, you should go see this place. Just go in and get a sense of it. It may not be right for you, but I guarantee you that it's right for a lot of people. And it's, it's, it, as I say, it's this, it's this gem of a program right in our very midst here in Marlboro and in Hudson. So, uh, John, thank you very much thank you know, you. For, for allowing this show. And Valerie and Regina, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks Thank to the you. folks at Hudson Cable for doing this. And we'll see you all in the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Hudson. Thank you very much. Thank you.